Guys, uh, we saw pretty some some pretty epic matches between Trump and Irony. Uh, Trump was the first player to qualify out of this group, so congrats to him. Yep. Um, he'll have a chance tomorrow to get to um, have a chance to go to prime basically by winning this tournament, and he's already won for himself at least seven hundred and fifty dollars. So not bad for two matches of Hearthstone, isn't that right, Hot Form? <laughs> yeah, not bad at all. Um, I mean, I'm sure he's going to study what Firebat was bringing yesterday because that's a really big opponent for him to be going up against in the next round. But of course, one more of these guys will manage to make it through to the semifinals. And we're doing the uh, losers match right now. So this is Powder versus Nostam. They have to win this series plus the Decider series uh, as well. So they have quite a road ahead of them if they want to get to the semifinals, but it's not impossible. Yeah, it's definitely not impossible. I think both these players, they've um, they're the more two of the more accomplished players in the tournament. Even though we do have players like Trump, Firebat, and Oskaka. Um, mm -hmm. Powder, of course, he he got second at assembly. Nastim, meanwhile, he's been tearing up the North American ladder, and he's done pretty well in the Onog tournament series so far. Um, even playing in the first feature tournament. In fact, I think he's the only player that's managed to play in two feature tournaments, and that's exactly what the tournament format is designed to um, mm -hmm. to really promote. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, I didn't know he was the only player to have made it. I know that uh, VX14 had yes. uh, qualified twice for the same feature tournament, but I guess he hadn't managed to get into one of the other ones as well. Yeah, quite an imp impressive feat right there. Yeah. It's not easy uh, to get through these open brackets, so you got to give them a lot of credit for making it this far even. You know, it's, it's been a while since we casted Nostem's game. It's probably been like two hours, actually. But we have to remember, Nostum is bringing a really interesting rogue deck. Uh, yeah, he is. He's bringing like a full aggressive lineup, pretty much. And the rogue involves Divine Shield, early game creatures, Cold Bloods, Charge. It's uh, definitely different than any of the other rogues we've seen so far in the tournament with the more aggressive flavor. Yeah, we'll get to that pretty soon. But um, let's first look at the first match. Um, it's going to be Mech Shaman versus Rogue. All right, uh, I I think the shaman is pretty favored in this, but the blade flurry is a huge move for powder, so that would be like the swing that he needs to take back the early board. the The biggest thing is like the mech shaman just has a whole bunch of damage, and rogue doesn't defend very well from straight damage. They defend from creatures, so as long as Nostam can draw into his flat burst, then like you almost might even mulligan for something like rock biters even though you don't plan to kill a creature just so you can keep your burst damage for later yeah uh it's quite interesting that i saw powder keep the violet teacher in his opening hand but it, it kind of does make sense the violet teacher is almost a win condition in this matchup in the sense if you can keep, let it stick on the board then uh, it's pretty much the mech shaman won't be able to um to clear off the one one tokens because like it has no AoE essentially. So I feel like this Violet Teacher almost acts like a taunt. Like it's, it's essentially a Sengen Shield Master. Wow, that is really cool. Yeah, and he just coins it out and it's so powerful here. As soon as Nostam can't kill it, uh, all these spells next turn, I mean, it's just going to be a Blade Flurry completely wrecks the board. You'll get yeah. the 1 1 tokens. Um, this might even be over here. Now these types of mech shaman games are decided really early in the match. Uh, there is quite a bit of burst damage for Nostam still in his hand, and like Lotheb is good next turn, but this is uh, about as punished as you can ever get on such a good opening with all of those early creatures in a mech warper. Yeah, that was actually this game was really impressive to me so far because Powder he kept three cards in his opening hand: Vive Teacher, the uh, Deadly Poison, and Blade Flurry, and he's used all of them so effectively in order to just almost shut out the game at the moment. Yeah, I think the Violet Teacher was like a bit of a risk. It obviously worked amazing for Powder, and I have to compliment him on that. But say the Power Mace had been in Nostam's hand last turn, the Teacher would have got cleared, and then it wouldn't be nearly as bad. Lothab, pretty good. Uh, could trade on it, or he just maybe ignores it. Like you said, those 1-1s one are really valuable because the Shaman has no AoE damage, so it's not really worth it to trade it into something like the Lothab. Yeah, especially since you already have the heal bot in play. It's like not that great. So really the only option here for Nostum to uh 
Wow. Wow. I actually did not expect that. Going Hard for a lot there. of board clear. And the Lotheb is going to get removed pretty easily. <laughs> Look at this hand. Yeah, you can even double SI it. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. This rogue, uh, this rogue setup is glorious. I like the SI over fan here just because the, the shaman's so low health already. Any extra creature you get is setting up for a lot better lethal turns. Yeah, I'd happen to agree with you. So there's how much damage on board? Eight. So an eviscerate would do it here. Mm, yep. Yeah, this is actually, mean. yeah, this is pretty, it's pretty huge if we don't know Powder's hand. Because it looks like this almost sets up lethal, but we know that Powder, he has a heal bot, so there's really no way he can die. Uh, what about a Lava Burst off the top? B. 15? No, it still wouldn't kill him. Another Rock Biter. Would add 6, yeah. 16. He would essentially need another Rock Biter into like a Crackle for 6 or something like that. Yeah. So and even the best draw of Rock Biter is not enough. And yeah, even the best like combination of Rock Biter, Crackle. He would need like Rock Biter, Crackle, and then another burst. I mean, considering how good the Rogue's hand was, this actually got insanely close. Um, yeah, it's it's just the power of Mech Shaman. He's two damage off lethal here, so you can see that like very often the Rogue gets punished. But Powder with that Violet Teacher that was really clutch, and it's gonna keep it in. Yeah, so I think that was actually pretty scary for um, for Powder since Nastam rolled a totem and then conceded. Yeah. Well, yeah, something like double crackle, lightning bolt, or I'm not sure. But uh, either way, to get down to only two health after having pretty much the perfect play every turn is really wild to me. It just shows how strong that Shaman deck is. I think it's very likely to take a game off of one of Powder's other decks, the Handlock and... Patron Warrior, both pretty weak to that burst style strategy. Yeah. But I do think one thing to talk about is that I felt like that rogue was slightly weak to Nostum's rogue. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's one deck that um, Nostum's rogue can't pray against as much. Again, Nostum is playing not a standard rogue, but he's playing the um, like a bursty um, aggro rogue, essentially, with Argent Squires, Leopard Gnomes. South Sea Deckhand and Cold Light Oracles, kind of like the turn six rogue or the backspace rogue from about over a year ago. Yeah, um, yeah, it's definitely the rogue versus rogue match. Uh, you pretty much only see oil rogues, but when you pull that more aggressive rogue out, it can be very punishing because you just start off faster than the other rogue is ever going to get anything going, and then you still have roughly the same plays for damage later in the game, so you can just punish them. Nostam picks Hunter, which is, uh, I mean, it's been solid so far in the tournament. I don't know if we've, uh, we saw Firebats Hunter lose quite a few times yesterday, but so far today the Hunters have been just absolutely killing everything. Yeah, we do have to remember this uh, snake trap that's here. Um, so this was similar to one of the openings that Trump faced, or Trump had. Um, interesting that Nostum didn't decide to throw out both Leopard Gnomes in there. But I guess yeah. it plays more on curve if he didn't draw this Haunted Creeper. Uh, I like the two Leopard Gnomes there, and then you just Steady Shot next turn. This actually works really well for him to use the Abusive now, I guess. So that was a much smarter play in the end with the uh, Armorsmith coming out. I think if a Taskmaster had come down, then not playing the second Leopard Gnome would have been really punishing. Oh, um, we do have to remember that Powder is actually playing Control Warrior, so I guess that changes the matchup slightly. That's true. I just tunnel vision and automatically assume Patron. We've seen it so much, but yeah, he's the only player so far to have brought Control Warrior, which is really cool. Um, I think like technically the Warrior actually has a pretty bad matchup in this type of fight, though, with Nostam playing the slightly hybrid hunter with the bigger creatures involved as well. Well, I don't think you kill the Acolyte here. Oh, this is really nice. 
yeah, to definitely power. Are. I think that looks like freezing, right? Yeah, I think I would almost 100% assume freezing. But powder, he does draw the fireworks, which means he'll be able to check for snakes. Oh yeah, that's true. He'll play the war axe and then find out it's snakes. So that was really fortunate for him. It gives him a lot of intel. The only thing is he could, all right, he could have maybe attacked the scientist and hoped there was no other trap. I guess he would, if he was paying attention, he would know Nostam does have snakes. Yeah. So I know, like pretty much all the players in this, in this tournament are really like scouting each other because pretty much everyone I've seen, they've uh, like. Are checking vods and they are asking me like, what did this guy bring? Like, where are the vods? Um, like, what can you tell me about these players, basically? Yeah, I'm. I'm sure they're doing scouting. Like, for the amount of prize money on the line for just single different placements that you want to win every single match. So, like, each opponent is a true brawl to see who will take it. Okay. Huffer. So. You actually didn't want to see Huffer there. You think Liak was better? Yeah. Um, it's like the same amount of damage, but it's more health, essentially. Yep. The Huffer spreads out the damage um, by adding like a more... So say you, you have to kill Huffer, right? If you killed Liak, it would take all the damage away, but when you kill Huffer, you're still taking the hit here, so... Yeah. Probably also, nice. Leoc would have been slightly less vulnerable to Brawl, maybe? Since you would maybe trade away one of your snakes. Well, in the end, Hunter's still in a pretty good position. Ah, not quite lethal. Very close, but not quite. I, I actually think the Warrior's probably in the lead right now. Just judging what? from like the draws, right? Because he, he can get a, a Shield Maiden on the field. And then possibly stabilize, since there's also a freezing trap. He also has shield block, so that's a lot of armor gain. I suppose. He has to live until um, till Alex Straza, but at that point he kind of shuts it down, where he gets Alex Straza and the Hunter has no cards left. There's definitely some good top decks for Nostam. He's playing some bigger creatures, and he's playing a lot of damage. A quick shot would be amazing, for example. That is not at all what he wanted, though. Pretty much the worst to draw possible. Yeah. You could kill the armor smith. You could, but then you give your opponent Alex Straza. Yes, leaving the armor smith is going to be uh, pretty bad if he has any kind of taunt. I guess you're maybe dead to taunt anyways, so there's no reason to play around a sludge belcher. I think you're right that the the warrior is actually in the lead, though. We see the warrior with four health left and <laughs> some armor, but you just need that little bit to stay alive, and then you'll be able to stabilize later. Like this, this the amount of armor that Powder has gained. It almost seems like it's out of reach for Nostum at the moment. Yep. And not only that, but he's throwing a shield maiden into freezing trap, which means that like he can possibly even get bounce that back. Powder really likes to get his armor smiths frozen. Oh well that's good. It looks like Nostam was really thinking about Alex Straza with the Arcane Golem. By not playing it last turn, he let the Armorsmith get frozen instead of a real creature, but he didn't want to give that early, and now that it's 10 mana, he just doesn't care, or well, it's 9 mana. Um, I think it's pretty easy play here with just Alex, but you could consider clearing the Arcane Golem and just armoring up instead. Yeah, I think both plays definitely have their merits. You um, could... Yeah, looks like pretty much your armor up and shield slam. You could play armor smith and shield slam, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. You, 
yeah, knowing when the hunter has no cards, it's like you, you want to take your time and just make sure you're thinking about what he's going to draw because you're the one with all the choices now. Uh, so I think either play is fine. One thing that Powder has to consider is like, what's the best draw my opponent could get? And it's probably something along the lines of quick shot, um, <laughs> quick shot into high main perhaps. And even if he draws a high main, I think you're even okay with that because you have an execute in your hand. Hmm. Well, this is a tough moment where you say, do I kill the armor smith or do I go face? Both of them feels like you can't really win. Well, from Nostam's perspective, there is still some chance he doesn't know there's an Alex Straza in Powder's hand, for example. But you always feel really bad as the Hunter player when on turn 9 or 10, you see your opponent point to himself with yeah. one of his cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the same feeling. Um, like I don't, You probably don't play against many mid-range sh shamans at all these days, but it's kind of like that feeling where they totem and then they wait like two seconds, and then you know you're going to get lightning stormed. Yeah. You know that feeling I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know that. I know that feeling for sure. Uh, so this means Powder goes up 2-0 in the series, which is a really good position for him. Uh, Nostam's deck are definitely capable of taking uh, a 3-0 against the Hand Warlock. Like, that's not out of the realm of possibility, but... Uh, I, I would even go as far as to say that Nost all three of Nostam's decks are favored against Handlock. Do you think yeah. that's, that's valid? I would agree. I think um, that probably the Hunter is going to have the hardest time, but if we consider that Hunter versus Handlock is a pretty good match for the Hunter, still Powder only needs to take a single one, and if he continues the luck of that rogue game with having the best possible hand, then I think he could take it for sure. Let's take a look at this hand. So, okay, so there's Molten Giant for Powder, but I feel like Molten Giant isn't even that good in this matchup because it's very often that the Shaman can just burst up to 12 HP yep. from an empty board even and pass taunts. I agree. Like sometimes the Molten will get playable at 5 mana or something, but at that point it's like you need to be doing more stuff on turn 7 or 8 because the Shaman's just going to kill you. The only way it, the Molten really works out is if they have like Whirling Zapomatic and you don't stop it and then they just chunk you really hard on turn three so that you could play the Molten early. Really nice curve from Nostam. Had one, two, and then uh, early four. Yeah. Might be uh, over. Yeah, this is... <laughs> This might be game over. Okay, so six. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, so I guess that is over. Um, how much damage is that? Oh, the Molten's useful. It doesn't kill. It's if useful, you... but if you can't like heal, so you're dead. So he should save the Urshock in this position, right? I guess it wouldn't matter because the Molten, uh, you would still have to kill the Azerdrake as well if it had Taunt. Oh wow, even going for the Lava Burst. Alright, so yeah, you're dead here, right? Both what? spells will guarantee you at least six. And yeah, you what, can't. what are you playing around by going Lava Burst here though? Like, I guess it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, there's probably some mana efficiency there, right? Where he plays the biggest... No, it was the same as if he played Crackle Lightning Bolt first. Yeah. Didn't really matter. Powder very casually drinking his coke. Uh, I don't think like he knows like there's nothing he could do in that game. Yeah. So you can't really blame him. Top decking even an earth shock. I mean the earth shock in the end it act didn't actually matter at all. But things just went perfectly for Nostum. And these are the kind of hands that you can get as the mech shaman. Sometimes you just draw completely dead, but sometimes you get the god hand. It's very um it's very all or nothing, I feel. Yeah, I always think of Shaman as the like more random class, right? With your totem mechanics giving you random stuff and things like Crackle. But then it's even pretty random based on the fact that you're not drawing any extra cards. 
So your opening hand is going to determine so much, and then you're hoping for specific things because your crackles are not useful on turn one at all. Yeah. It's just like how not only is the class random, but the way that these decks are built to make it really random. It's not yeah. like the. It's not even like Aggro Paladin, where pretty much all of your minions are really good early on since they're all low drops. Yeah. Um, it's just that you have like so much burst in your deck that are really good later on, but really bad early on. So sometimes you can draw all your burst early on, sometimes you can draw all your minions later on. So I think this match is a little easier for Powder than the Rogue. But the rogue does have the potential to just not get a lot of burst damage put together. Like sometimes you draw mostly creatures, and once the taunts go up, um, then you can't really get by them. In this match, like this is a standard game that you would often see played out on ladder. It's slightly favored towards the hunter, but it's by no means impossible. You just get up a couple of molten giants, and then it's pretty easy to take it from there. Yeah, uh, generally I find that. The um, if it's a phase hunter, I feel like the matchup is even close to 50 50, but it's really the more mid rangey or hybrid hunters that make the make it more difficult for handlock because you can sometimes stabilize behind uh, molten giants and then put up a heal against phase hunters, but against the more mid range hunters, you can do that, but then they still have a high main on the field and they still kill you anyway. Well, the Drake gets absolutely punished. I think Hellfire would be a great play if he had some molten giants, but Hellfiring and then. Pretty much you're going to nothing. Could play the heal bot instead here. Let's see Hellfire had 13, it's got two left, so you're at 11. Um, Alright, so Powder needs some kind of taunt. I think he's, he's dead, right? <laughs> Yeah, there's uh Yeah, he's yeah. he's dead. Healbot taunt. Yeah, I think I think Healbot and then you taunt it. Actually like it does keep you alive here, right? Uses quick shot on the healbot, hits for six. But the because there's no beast in play, it's not enough damage. Even if there was a beast in play, it wouldn't quite be enough damage anyways. Yeah. <laughs> that feels pretty bad. It's like you're at five and you're thinking, oh man, I'm going to die next turn. I'll play the heal bot. And you're immediately back at five and now you don't have a heal bot. So situation just got a lot worse. Yeah. Without a heal bot, you just die from a kill command. And that was actually like... I think that was the quickest game we've had so far in this tournament. Yeah, these uh, this game and the last game <laughs> were just split second compared to the triple control warrior we saw <laughs> earlier. It took uh, three times the length of this series for just one game. Oh man. So <laughs> this must Boy. feel pretty bad for Powder. Yeah. And you know what? I think Nostum's lineup is actually very anti-handlock and it could just be that he decided that he wanted to bring a lineup that was specifically targeting Handlock, especially since Trump was in his group. And I think yep. Trump actually got pretty lucky that he avoided Nostam altogether. Yeah, I agree. Because Nostam's uh, also good against Patron, so it seems like it would have punished both of those decks. Potentially it's good against the Hunter, although Mech Shaman generally is not a great matchup versus Hunter. All right, so in this matchup, um, Mill is actually very common. Well, I will say that Nostam is not playing the Shadow Steps, so it's a lot harder to mill when you That's don't uh, Shadow Step the Oracle. Which is really unusual. Shadow Step was a very common inclusion in this deck because with an Arcane Golem, when you Shadow Step Arcane Golem, you replay it for one mana. So it's uh, one mana for four damage, which is like the highest increment of damage you ever get. So I think matchup unfamiliarity actually comes into play here because you're not, you, you never get practice against this deck. So there's a question as, do you tap here or do you just go for the 2-3? I think the 2-3 was really solid play there. Looks like Nostam has to eviscerate it because otherwise it's going to trade. Delight. 
it's not uh, by any means like a bad turn for Nostam. It's just that Eviscerate is guaranteed face damage, so it feels a little wasteful. Yeah, it, not only that, but it's guaranteed face damage that gets past taunts. But that being said, because you've seen a Sonic Fury Protector early on, you're less likely to think that taunts will be coming up uh, in the later stages of the game. Oh, this uh, does not feel very comfortable. You're going to be playing a Twilight Drake. Oh, so the extra cards could be pretty good. No, oh, nothing great. You definitely played the right Twilight Drake because you want to kind of tilt your opponent. Although it, it doesn't actually matter at all. <laughs> I generally like uh, playing the thing on the left side because that way they're less likely to know if I've been keeping a card. Mm. And it's like, there's no real disadvantage to it. So we kind of talked about how Molten Giants weren't as relevant against Mech Shaman. I'm not actually completely sure how oh. relevant... Oh, that was really... Wow. Horrible. That was the pretty much the absolute worst thing to throw away. He'd yeah. already played one Protector, so... Yeah. How important do you think the Molten Giants are in this matchup? Is I feel like the I guess the burst is coming from the Sharp Sword Oil, so yeah. it's actually damage that can't get past taunts. There's a lot of bursts, so I think the Molten Giants are sometimes relevant. The Rogue has like often just one line of play, and that it could be they need to do it. But with a hand like Nostams, where I have two oils, I don't think the Moltens are going to be that great. It's going to end in one big turn. Mm, that was pretty weak, though. The Sludge Belcher held its ground. Seems like, uh, yeah, Shadow Flame here. Anything you can do to clear the board is going to be pretty useful. Removes it all, keeps a taunt. Looks pretty good for the Hand Warlock's position, although the Rogue has a lot of cards. Uh, he needs to have more more stuff on the board to actually apply pressure with. This gets cleaned up pretty easily by the Dark Bomb. Wow, and the Silence Draw. I don't actually know yep. if you play that. I think you. I think uh, silencing it is definitely relevant. Um, yeah, Dark Bomb might not be as relevant since you can just make such an easy trade. And I definitely do think that because he has a Defender of Argus, for example, in his hand, Powder seems to be in a pretty dominating position. Yeah, considering how the you know, Sun Fury Protector got tossed, all right, Nostam just going for it. He's had enough of this. His hand is just all damage at this point, so. Especially, I think Nostam feels pretty good right now, having seen both Protectors gone. And the Sludge Belcher is down. It's like there's not that many things left to taunt, but the Argus is chilling in hand, so. Wait, actually, there's no heal bot from, in Powder's hand. So it just might be possible, even after all these Molten Giants and taunts, that the spell damage could just go through. So the spell damage is Oil, Flurry, Eviscerate, which is going to do 7 plus 4, which is 1 damage off lethal. <laughs> So yeah, Nostam is one damage off lethal here. Uh, the Flurry will not be able to clear the creatures, so he needs to uh, not go face. He has to Flurry and then... Ooh, shit. He probably should have checked for the who is first. Well, anyways, he has to do the Flurry and then kill one of the creatures to attempt to survive this turn. Oh, the Auto Barber. But it was Argus, so the giant's too big anyways. So I guess he has to eviscerate a giant even. No, um, you can even hmm. consider eviscerating the Drake because you have the the SI agent next turn for the giant. Yeah, he will die if he does that. Yeah, we know that of course. Like Nostam, oh, he's he's so stressed right now. Oh, well, this is two to two. I mean, this is uh, get knocked out of the tournament or not. Uh, oh. It was uh, unlikely that he would win anyways, just with the taunts in the way. But yeah, he is dead now. 
It was a really good run. I would have loved to see that rogue deck win. I think it had full potential to win here, but Powder picking up all the taunts was really helpful for him. Yeah. Even if he didn't have the Dark Bomb, we could have actually had the potential to see one of the first highs in Hearthstone with yeah. the double Hellfire. That would have been cool. Oh, so Powder takes the series. That means he moves on to the Decider match. He still has to win another set, so uh, this journey is not done yet. But that was a really nice game. Yeah, it almost looked pretty bad for Powder at the end since he was facing, with Handlock, he was facing three decks that seemed to be pretty good against Handlock. And not only that, but um, the, all these, all his first games went by so fast. Like his handlock lost two games within the span of about ten minutes. Fortunately, Powder yeah. climbed it. Um, yeah, he finally climbed it out at, at the end, and he's going to be facing off against Irony in the final match. Um, before we go to the final match, we have to remind you guys once again: please support our sponsors. Please support esports um, by going to geico.onog.gg. Right there, you can get a free Geico quote. See if you can save some uh, money on your car insurance, which I'm sure you will, 15% or more even. And at the same website, you can enter for a chance to enter an official TSM PC with some of the best specs there are on the market. Uh, and once again, we have to plug our open tournaments, which will be happening this Monday and this Wednesday. On August 10th and 12th, there will be an EU and an NA tournament on each of those days. And if you by entering those tournaments, you can win a chance to enter one of these future tournaments, which has a 6K prize pool. And from these tournaments, you can qualify directly to packs. Um, pretty exciting. You get Geico points, you get um, lots of money, and you get Hearthstone World Championship points. In fact, it's going to be the last big tournament of the entire year. So I'm really excited for our entire tournament series. Uh, we're yeah. going to take a short break right now, but when we get back within just a short two minutes, we're going to have our final series of the day. It's going to be Irony versus Powder. See you then.